Hi guys, welcome back, and we're going to start part three here. Now we're still talking about the uh, basic rules and regulations. Uh, we're in what's considered subgroup B. We're going to be talking about the uh, authorized frequencies, frequency allocation, the ITU regions, emission type, restricted subbands, spectrum sharing, and transmitting or transmissions near band edge. Now that sounds like a whole lot, but it's really not very complicated. Uh, there will be a few things in here that are just simple memorization type things, but I think you can get it okay. So here we go right into it. All right, so let's start in on the uh, section B with question one, and it is what is the ITU? And your uh, potential answers are A, an agency of the United States Department of Telecommunications Management, B, a United Nations Agency for Information and Communication Technology Issues, or C, an Independent Frequency Coordination Agency, or D, a Department of the FCC. And you can see we are referencing again uh, part 97.3. This is paragraph 28. Unfortunately, uh, it really doesn't say much other than the ITU stands for International Telecommunications Union. Now, if that's all you remember, and you're probably okay to get past the exam. But let me give you a little bit better description of them. And that is this right here. Uh, the International Telecommunication Union is an agency of the United Nations. Uh, in other words, it's a division of the United Nations, whose purpose is to coordinate telecommunication op operations and services throughout the world. In other words, they are the, uh, the overseers of the radio waves across the entire planet. Now, they were originally founded in 1865 as the International Telegraph Union, the ITU is the oldest existing international organization. The ITU headquarters are in Geneva, Switzerland. So originally they were founded when there was a radio telegraph. And since uh, telegraph is not the primary means of communication anymore, they've changed it to just a telecommunications union. Now this is what their little logo looks like. In, uh, this is the ITU zones and regions. In other words, the International Telecommunication Union has sort of broken up the entire world into little uh, pockets, and they've all given everything a number. So the simple answer to what is the ITU, it is a United Nations Agency for Information and Communication Technology Issues. All right. Uh, number two is going to be North American amateur stations are located in which ITU region? Your possible answers are region one, region two, region three, region four. Okay, now we look at question you'll see up here. Guess what? They are not referencing anything in part 97. Because as we learned in the previous slide, the ITU is an international organization, not anything for the uh, United States of CC. I want to put this map back up here and uh, kind of blow it up a little bit where you can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, the good old United States, or North America, I should say all of North America, is located in ITU region number two. We're going to make the answer B region number two. Now, an interesting thing is, why are we in region two? Well, if I stop and think about it, the ITU is based in Switzerland, and where might you find Switzerland? Say right about here, dead center of region one. Hmm, makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, moving on to question three. Which frequency is within the six meter band? And you notice they are uh, referring to 97.301, which 97.301 is actually this chart. And you can see from this chart that the 6 meter band is in the 50 to 54 megahertz range. 
Now that's probably enough. If you can remember that six meters is 50 to 54 megahertz, then you wouldn't have any problem remembering that the answer is B, 52.52 megahertz. Now there are a lot of questions of this type all throughout the technician, the general, and the extra class licensing. So for me personally, instead of trying to remember each band, uh, I chose to remember one formula, which is the frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wave length. Now in this case, the wave length is 6 meters, and speed of light is 300 million meters per second. And like I say, they give you the 6 meters to calculate from. So I take 300 million meters divided by 6 meters, which equals 50,000 hertz. Excuse me, 50 hertz. A lot of zero there. Or 50 hertz. Or 50 megahertz. Which you can see puts that the lower band, the lower the band is 50 megahertz. So your 52.52 megahertz is above that. But is it? So for me, the next one I remember is, I just calculate the next one up also, in this case, would be uh, six, uh, excuse me, five meters. So my 300 million divided by five is going to make it 60 megahertz, which is definitely going to put my 52.525 right smack in the middle between 50 and 60. Well, maybe not right in the middle, but you get the idea. So there you go. You can just go back to the chart and remember the frequencies per, in the bands, or you can remember a, a formula and calculate all of them as needed. That is your choice. All right, let's move on to question four. Which amateur band are you using when your station is transmitting on 146.2 megahertz? Your options are A, 2 meter, B, 20 meter, C, 14 meter, or D, 6 meter. And we are uh, referred to 97.301, which is the same we showed before, which is this right here. Now, keep in mind that we are in ITU region 2, which puts the frequency, uh, the band for the frequency in the 2 meter range. Now again, you can just memorize that the answer is 2 meters, and there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to get through the test, right? Worry about all the rest of these uh, charts later. Or you can calculate it. Remember our friend here, frequency equals uh, time in centimeters divided by the bandwidth? Well, we can do a little hour and flip that around to say uh, the uh, uh, wavelength equals the time in centimeters divided by the frequency. So in this case, um, our time in centimeters is our 300 million, that's 300 million meters per second, that's the speed of light, divided by the frequency, 146.252 megahertz, and it comes up with 2047502.0475020 Oh four seven five oh two oh well it went off the screen. Okay. Let's just say it's that many meters. Uh, let's make it simple and just say two meters. So you can see by using just remembering you can uh, this simple formula, you can get through most of these type questions uh, with a little bit of mathematics. And this is easy to do with a calculator, and they do let you carry a calculator in on the exam. Um, or you can just remember that one point, or excuse me, one four six point five two megahertz is in the two meter band. Two meter band is pretty important for the uh, the technician class ham operator because that is probably where you will be doing most of your local communications in. All right, moving on to question five. Which 70 centimeter frequency is authorized to a technician class license holder operating in ITU region two? 
and again you'll see that we're back to this 97.301 chart and that our ITU region that's the uh, North America uh, is listed here and that would put our 70 centimeter down here in the 420 to 450 megahertz range or answer C 443.350 megahertz all right so let's see if our uh, our calculation still holds true for this one and that is going to be our frequency equals the time in centimeters divided by the bandwidth so the first thing we have to do is take 70 centimeters and convert it to meters which comes out at 7 meters and then we do our math our 300 million that is the speed of light divided by 0 0.7 and it comes up with this big old honking long number that almost goes off the page there also or it comes out to 428.571428 megahertz and what you'll find most of the time is that uh, the uh, frequencies are rounded off so in this case the rounded off frequency is 428.52 megahertz which is in the 70 meter frequency range which as you can see that is the only one even close uh, at answer C so our friend this formula here comes in handy okay well that's time. it for this video uh, we've started getting into uh, so, some more technical things here and, and this is not overly complicated mathematics it's pretty easy now I did want to talk to you real quickly about a calculator now when you go to take the test um, you won't be able to use your smartphone you won't be able to use a computer however you will be able to take a basic calculator with you now um, I reviewed all of the mathematics involved in all three tests technician um, general and uh, extra and what I went to look for was a calculator that had the primary functions that you're going to need on primary buttons okay what that means is um, a lot of these functions if you look in here I don't know if you can see it on this camera these little yellow functions above those are alternate functions in other words you have to push a button or a space or a skip or a alt or whatever and then use that button well, your primary buttons for uh, these tests are the pi, reciprocal, square, square root, and you may, in some of the general, and uh, if you go that far, and the extra class, you will use the cosine, tangent, and the x to y buttons. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind if you're going to get a calculator that you can uh, I think this one was 12 bucks I think it was probably one of the cheaper scientific calculators there's a bunch of them out there look for one that's gonna make the task that you're doing easier that's it for now I appreciate you watching I uh, and again you know if you need to repeat this I'll put a link right about here to repeat if you're going to uh, just move on to the next video, I'll put a link up here for the next video. And if you've come to these videos uh, in the middle and you want to jump to the beginning and watch, click right about there. And I just want to say, I'm sorry about the shirt. It might have put your eye out. But my wife hates it, so i got to wear it at least once a year just to irritate her. That's it. Bye.